It's Patrick Hutzel from Intensive Care at Home, where we provide tailor-made solutions for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies and otherwise medically complex patients by improving their quality of life and where we also provide tailor-made solutions to hospitals and intensive care units to save money and resources whilst providing quality care. In the last blog, I shared another case study from one of our clients, Intensive Care at Home Services for a 15-month-old toddler. Another win-win situation and success story. You can check out last week's episode by clicking on the link below this video. In today's blog, I want to share how do intensive care at home and long-term intensive care compare? For anybody who has worked in intensive care for any length of time, it's crystal clear that current occupancy rates as well as average length of stays in intensive care are non-sustainable. They are non-sustainable on a financial level as well as on a bed occupancy level. For any family who has a loved one either in intensive care for long-term treatment or for any family that has a loved one at home who's at risk of going into intensive care at any given time, it's also clear that it's non-sustainable on an emotional level. And it's clear that other solution, solutions must be found to tackle long-term ventilation or otherwise medical, medically complex situations that can be managed at home with intensive care nurses. Therefore, today I want to make a quick comparison in how the two solutions stack up against each other, the intensive care at home solution or the long-term intensive care solution. So let's quickly compare the two options. Let's start with long-term intensive care. Now the cost for long-term intensive care is approximately $5,000 per bed day in intensive care. Intensive care beds are in high demand. And for any bed day in intensive care, a bed is unnecessarily blocked and other critically ill patients may be unable to access this any particular ICU bed. Now, as you would also be aware of quality of life for patients and their families in intensive care is simply diminished. Furthermore, in end of life situations, the quality of end of life is diminished for intensive care patients and their families. Now, you may remember me talking about this before, but 75% of people in first world countries, if given a choice, want to die at home. And yet, less than 15% of people in first world countries actually do die at home. The infection risk in intensive care is also extremely high due to the exposure to other critically ill patients in the environment, often leading to unnecessary infections and complications. And weaning off ventilation and tracheostomy, for example, is often difficult due to a sterile hospital environment that is not very patient and family friendly. Let's now look at intensive care at home in comparison. The cost for intensive care at home is less than 50% of a hospital intensive care bed. Therefore, savings for health funding agencies and hospitals are immense. They're basically saving more than 50% of the cost. Next, intensive care at home services are freeing up intensive care beds that are in high demand. Therefore, other critically ill patients are able to access this life-saving ICU beds. And next, the quality of life for patients and their families is improving significantly at home. For example, most of our clients report a significant improvement in their quality of life when being looked after at home by intensive care nurses. This enables them to participate in social activities, go back to school, kindergarten, study, etc. Next, the quality of end of life for patients and their families is significantly improved and our clients' families are immensely grateful that we are able to provide end of life care at home instead of spending time in ICU. We provide end of life care and palliative care for both 
adults and children. We therefore provide a service that 75% of the population wants in first world countries, which is to die at home when the time comes. Also important, most of our client families can go back to work and have back some quote unquote normality in their lives once their loved one is at home and has left intensive care. Most families who have a loved one in intensive care long term are unable to work because they spend day and night in intensive care. Their family relationships and other commitments suffer as well. Also, weaning off ventilation and tracheostomy at home is possible and we have proven this with our clients. The risk for infections is reduced at home and therefore the risk for complications is reduced. Most of all, families are united at home and the stress of being in intensive care is reduced because we have the skills and expertise required to manage and care for patients on ventilation, tracheostomy and other medically complex patients at home. Now that you can actually see the comparison, which one would you choose? I would really love you to leave a comment on the blog below this video, or if you are watching this on YouTube, just leave a comment below the video. Now, if you want to find out how we can help you to get your loved one out of intensive care, including palliative care or long-term acute care, we can also help your loved one get out of a nursing home, for example. Or if you find that you have insufficient support for your loved one at home on a ventilator, and if you want to know how to get funding for our service, or if you have any questions, please send me an email to patrick at intensivecareathome.com or call on one of the numbers on the top of the website. Also, have a look at our career section here on our website. We are currently hiring ICU and pediatric ICU nurses for clients in Melbourne and in South Gibson, Victoria. We are an NDIS, TAC and DVA approved community service provider in Australia. We have also been part of the Royal Melbourne Health Accelerator Program for innovative healthcare companies last year. Thank you for tuning into this week's blog. This is Patrick Hutzel from Intensive Care at Home, and I'll see you again next week in another update.